by the help of her prayers, keep us faithful in your service and let our words and actions be so inspired as to bring glory to your name now and forever. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Perpetual Help, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we present our petitions as the humble sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, hear the prayers of your people as we come to you under the patronage of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Despise not our requests and our necessities, and deliver us from all dangers, O ever-glorious and blessed Virgin. Let us pray. Grant wisdom and prudence to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Cardinal Robert McElroy, our Auxiliary Bishop Ramon, our clergy, and all the leaders of our nation, state, and community. Grant that people may live in social peace and religious unity. Grant that the Holy Spirit guide the sons and daughters of our parish in choosing their way of life. Grant that the people of our parish retain their health and that the sick regain their health according to your holy will. Grant eternal rest to all the deceased members of our parish and to all the souls of the faithful departed. Grant guidance and aid in all the special intentions of this parish and to all the needs of those present here. Let us silently present our personal petitions to our mother perpetual help. O Mother of Perpetual Help, we the faithful proclaim your praise as the most pure bearer of God and our ready helper. You are the protection of our race, our tainted nature's solitary boast, the shelter of humankind. The Lord is with you, and through you he extends to us the gifts of his tender heart. All creation is made joyful, seeing you with suppliant arms uplifted praying that the burdens of this world may be lightened, that rulers may govern wisely, and that our souls may be redeemed, and we may enter into peace with your Son. And so, blessed Lady, all-embracing refuge, we solemnly acclaim your protection and beg Christ, your son, our brother, for his mercy, that we may be kept from all evil. We acclaim your greatness. We venerate your gracious care. We present ourselves before you in faith, hope, and love, seeking the truth that will lead us along the way into the life that you share with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Come and worship the Lord, for we are his people the flock that he shepherds. Alleluia. Come, let us bow down and worship, bending the knee before the Lord, our Maker. 
for we are his people. We are the flock that he shepherds. Come and worship the Lord, for we are his people, the flock that he shepherds. Alleluia. Good morning, brothers and sisters. And today's Mass Intentions for the Repose of the Soul of Agnes Wonderlick. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We are on September 20th, and today we celebrate the memorial of St. Andrew Kim, a priest, Paul, and his companions, Matas, from Korea. The Lord is inviting us to reflect whether we are really his brothers, sisters, and mother. And also today, in a special way, we begin the novena of St. Francis of Assis to prepare ourselves to celebrate the great feast of our parish. To prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily this Holy Eucharist, let us ask God to forgive our sins. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask a blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have been pleased to increase your adopted children in all the world, and who made the blood of the martyrs, St. Andrew Kim and his companions, a most fruitful seed of Christians, of, Christ, of Christians, grant that we may be defended by their help and profit always from their example. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Like a stream in the king's heart, in the hand of the Lord. Wherever it pleases him, he directs it. All the ways of a man might be right in his own eyes, but it is the Lord who proves hearts. To do what is right and just 
is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the tillage of the wicked is sin. The plans of the diligent are sure of profit, but all rash haste leads certainly to poverty. Whoever makes a fortune by a lying tongue is chasing a bubble over deadly snares. The soul of the wicked man desires evil. His neighbor finds no pity in his eyes. When the arrogant man is punished, the simple are the wiser. When the wise man is instructed, he gains knowledge. The just man appraises the house of the wicked. There is one who brings down the wicked to ruin. He who shuts his ear to the cry of the poor, he himself also call and not be heard. The word of the Lord. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. The way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Give me discernment that I may observe your law and keep it in all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commands, for it is in it I delight. And I will keep your law continually forever and ever. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The mother of Jesus and his brother came to him, but were unable to join him because of the crowd. He was told, your mother and your brothers are standing outside, and they wish to see you. He said to them in reply, my mother and my brothers are those who will hear the word of God and act on it. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord.
my mother and my, my brothers, are those who hear the word of God and act on it. When we read the when we read the Gospel of Saint Matthew, we have the genealogy of Jesus. Many generations, or we call family tree, how he came about, and at the end, said Joseph husband of Mary from whom they bore Jesus. So people knew that Jesus was the son of Mary. And in many instances in the Bible, say, is this not the son of the carpenter? Is this not the son of Mary? And we know his brothers and his sisters Jesus knew this concept and the understanding of the people of his time. They took him as the son of Mary and Joseph. And today, they come and they wish to meet with him while he's already in his job teaching the people. And we are told many people we are there listening to him. And they give a word that your mother and your sisters, brothers, are here, would like to meet with you. And he gives this answer. Who is my mother? Who is my brothers? Who are my brothers? are those who listen the word of God and act on it. He tries to let people now understand that his relationship with the human being is not so much blood relationship, but it is a spiritual relationship. And who are those acting on the word that they hear. It is not enough to listen by our ears, but it is important to listen with the ear of the heart, which at the end will embrace this word and let it work in us, transform us. So Jesus says, if you listen, and you let it go, still you cannot be a brother, a mother, a sister to him. Because he came to change the world. He came to transform the world, and we all. And therefore, to listen to him means to accept the changes he proposes. And in the gospel, there are so many parables, as we had it two Sundays ago. Uh, there are, there are be, the beard shoots. All of these are to help us to shape our lives. And therefore, he wanted to tell those people who are listening that my relationship with you is not so much a blood relationship, not this affinity. It is to let you change, to let you transform and live according to the will of God and the commandments of God. The first reading is telling us how this book of Proverbs tells us how to become wise, to become good. If you are arrogant, the word of God will not penetrate in our hearts. But if we are humble, the word of God will shape in us. And therefore, the, the psalm also says, 
Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commandments. That I needed to follow your commandments, to live according to your commandments. And this is how we can be really true disciples of Christ. He was not arrogant or disobedient by saying that who are my mother, who are my brothers and sisters, is like to neglect them. No. He wanted to bring the idea that we needed to unite with Christ, not so much in human terms, but in spiritual terms. That is what he came to do, so that we become really, afterwards, his adopted brothers and sisters to inherit the kingdom of God. The matters that we celebrate today from Korea, they were passing a terrible situation, moment of persecution. Korea did not accept the word of God. They did not accept the missionaries they did not uh, accept it to see Christians thrive in their land. So the regime wanted it to terminate the Christianity in that land. And yet from the beginning, when they saw the Christians growing, they started persecuting them. And here we have the first fruit of the evangelization in Korea. St. Andrew Kim, there is another name. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. And if you pronounce it badly, it's not the same person. But it's something like uh, uh, Tegan and Paul Chong Ha Has and many companions. And we are told that in these campaigners, there are a lot of people, late, religious, seminarians, all said, we have listened to the word of God and we want to die because of that. So 103 people were put to death because of the faith. And we celebrate together with this big number of saints who give us the example of acting on the word of God which we hear every day. They were convinced that they needed to transform their lives and the lives of the societies. But the society, the regime in a way, had a threat from them. So the only thing is to do away with them so that they can continue with their ordinary life, maybe mischievous life, sinful life. Why? Because the word of God did not find a place in them. Because the instructions of God did not find a place in the arrogant heart and mind, as the book of Proverbs tells us. And therefore, today we honor them because they give us an example to become really disciples, brothers, and mothers, sisters of Christ. You and me, we begin this journey to become related to Christ on the day of our baptism. We were made adopted children of God, mothers of Jesus, brothers of Jesus, and sisters of Jesus. How we continue to keep this faith, this relationship with Jesus who shows us the Father. Can we really say we are truly brothers and sisters of Christ, mothers of Christ, through our lives, 
through responding to every word that we hear uh, preached, read to us from the Holy Bible, from the Holy Scriptures. Can we really say, yes, we are the brothers and sisters, mother of Christ. Once St. John Paul II was visiting some countries, and he says, in many countries today, we are happy to go and canonize or beatify the saints, the blessed. What happened in your countries, we don't have saints. We don't have martyrs. Are you living the word of God? He asked them. But he always says, where there is problem, where there is suffering, persecution, people become strong and become defenders of the gospel, of the word of God, of the faith. Sometimes we receive the word of God through the missionaries, through the evangelization, and then we relax, you know. But remember, in the baptism, we say, we are baptized in the name of Jesus, and we are buried with him so that we can rise uh, with him. So death is part of our life as a Christians. We should not fear death because it can come at any time, not because we are sick, not because we are uh, advanced in age, but because we are Christians. Any day, somebody can come here and say, I don't want you to pray here. Can we stand and say, no, we will go on. That courage. This is what they had, these saints that we are celebrating today. But today I invite you and me, I myself, to look at our own lives, how genuine we are in keeping in practice the word we hear, the word it comes from the mouth of the Lord, inviting us to become his true brothers and sisters, his mother, but all in all, his disciples to follow him. So we pray today through the intercession of St. Andrew Kim and his companions that he may give us also the audacity to live the word of God without fearing the eyes of people, the words of other people, saying, what are you doing? Why are you going to the church every day? Why are you receiving the house, the sacrament of the Eucharist? Many questions people ask us, and sometimes we try to go back because we don't want to offend them, but we are ready to be despised and look down at our faith. This sense they tell us, no, we needed to stand, whatever may come, we are Christians, we are disciples of Christ. So let us pray in this Holy Eucharist, not only for us, but in the whole church, Catholic church, all the Christians, we may become true brothers, sisters, mothers, and disciples of Christ. Amen. Let us rise.
We have all gathered here, dear brothers and sisters, to celebrate the mysteries of our redemption. Let us therefore ask Almighty God that the whole world may be watered from these springs of all blessing and life. For Pope Francis and all men and women called to leadership in the church, may God's word inspire them and discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those entrusted with positions of leadership, may the Holy Spirit guide them in attentiveness to the needs of all who are placed in their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened with physical, emotional, or mental struggles, may God grant them healing and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gather here who are charged with using our gifts to build the kingdom of God on earth. May Christ's compassion be reflect in all we do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they embrace in the eternal love in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of the repulse of the soul of Agnes Wanderlich. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for those intentions in the quiet of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for our brothers and sisters in those countries where faith and religion is prohibited. Many are suffering because of searching for love of Christ and following Christ. They cannot celebrate the Eucharist publicly like what we do. They have to hide it themselves, but still they want to proclaim by their words, by their life outside. We pray that the Lord continue to give them courage and strength to live what they believe. May your mercy we beseech you, O Lord. Be with your people who cry to you so that what they seek at your prompting they may obtain by your ready generosity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. To you, O oh God, I lift up my soul, lift up my spirit to my Lord. To you, I lift up my soul. Make me to know your ways, O oh God. Teach me your paths. Guide me, you are my Savior. To you, O oh God, I lift up my soul. Lift up my spirit to my Lord. To you, I lift up my soul. Good and upright, our gracious God, showing the way, guiding the humble to justice. To you, O oh God, I lift up my soul, lift up my spirit to my Lord. To you, I lift up my soul. Steadfast and kind your ways, O oh God, all who revere your covenant, know your friend.
friendship. To you, O oh God, I lift up my soul, lift up my spirit to my Lord. To you I lift up my soul. To you, O oh God, I lift up my soul, lift up my spirit to my Lord. To you I lift up my soul. Make me to know your ways, O oh God. Teach me your paths. Guide me, you are my Savior. To you, O oh God, I lift up my soul. Lift up my spirit to my Lord. To you I lift up my soul. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord, look with favor, Almighty God on the offerings of your people, and through the intercession of the blessed martyrs and Rukim and companions, grant that we ourselves may become a sacrifice acceptable to you for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, Andrew, Kim, and companions, pour out like a Christ to glorify your name. Shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power. And on the feeble bestow strength to bear your witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on the earth. And before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus. Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis sunt celi et terra, gloria tua, hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, hosanna, in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the blood and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And he giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Andrew Kim and his companions, and with you all of the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all of the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop and Cardinal, the order of bishops, all of the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unit of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and from the by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not too worthy that we should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Spirit and grace here in this meal, you are the wind that breathes through the field. Gather the wheat and form us in Christ. Come be our source and breath of life. In the bread blessed, broken and shared, Christ is our life, whose presence we bear. Come, O oh Spirit, make your grace revealed in this holy meal. Spirit and grace here in this meal, you are the life that flows through the vine. Gather this drink and form us in Christ. Come be our source and blood of life. In the bread blessed, broken and shared, Christ is our life whose presence we bear. Come, O oh Spirit, make your grace revealed in this holy meal. Spirit and grace here in this place, you are the light that shines in this space. Gather your people and form us in Christ. Come be the heartbeat of our lives. In the bread blessed, broken and shared, Christ is our life whose presence we bear. Come, O oh Spirit, make your grace revealed in this holy meal. Spirit of God sending us forth, we spread your wisdom throughout all the earth. Gather the nations and form us in Christ. Come be the presence in our lives. In the bread blessed, broken and shared, Christ is our life whose presence we bear. 
Come, O Spirit, make your grace revealed in this holy Let us pray. Nourished with the food of the valiant, as we celebrate the blessed martyrs and Rokim and his companions, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that clinging faithfully to Christ, we may labor in the church for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. I invited the minister to the Eucharist. Pray. Gracious Lord. You have nourished your people with the body and blood of your son, that we might have eternal life. Bless our ministers who have chosen to take the word of God and the bread of life to the members of our body who are unable to be with us because of illness. May the saving mysteries they share with the sick lead them to fullness of health. And may the sick know the care of your touch through the ministry of these servants, we ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace. So as I said at the beginning, uh, today we begin the novena of St. Francis. We'll do the exposition, and then Sister will come to lead us uh, into this new novena. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to glorify the Lord with our lives. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. O salutaris hostia. Que celi pandis hostium, bella premunt hostilia, daro burfer auxilium, unitrino que domino. 
sempiterna gloria, qui vitam sine termino, nobis donet in patria. Amen. Novena to St. Francis of Assisi, day one, conversion. Where there is love and wisdom, there is neither fear nor ignorance. Where there is patience and humility, there is neither anger nor annoyance. Where there is poverty and joy, there is neither cupidity nor avarice. Where there is peace and contemplation, there is neither care nor restlessness. Where there is fear of God to guard the dwelling, there no enemy can enter. Where there is mercy and prudence, there is e there is neither excess nor harshness. Reflection. Francis was the most free peop was one of the most free persons who has ever lived, intentionally free, that is. His conversion had its dramatic moment, for example, embracing the leper on the road but it was an ongoing, progressive opening himself to God's grace and to the life changes which that grace always sets in motion. Because we're constantly tempted to think that God will ask too much from us, we wonder, will the first pair of virtues in each line above lead us to what concludes each line? Will love and wisdom truly keep us from fear and ignorance? Thomas of Celano, the first biographer of Francis, wrote that the poor man of Assisi seemed to his contemporaries like a man from another world. He increasingly based his life on God's sense of normal and that meant progressively deeper conversion to God's ways. God's grace needs room to work in a person's life. Conversion creates that room in us by reassuring what, a truly, what is truly important and what is not. The beggar from Francis could easily have dismissed him, became an instrument of God's grace. Prayer. Good and gracious God, you have created in us your image and likeness. We are constantly tempted to try to improve on your work by finding some shortcut, some way that will save us time and energy. Help us to remember, as St. Francis of Assisi knew very well, that conversion to your ways is indeed the quickest and only reliable way to you, God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.